Evaluation of Polyuria and Polydipsia Polyuria can be the result of an osmotic diuresis or a water diuresis. In turn, a water diuresis may result from inappropriate water loss as in either central or nephrogenic diabetes insipidus or may represent appropriate water loss as in primary polydipsia. Osmotic diuresis causing polyuria is often evident. Poorly controlled glucose levels in a patient with diabetes mellitus, administration of mannitol to a patient with increased intracranial pressure and high protein feedings are all examples in which polyuria is a result of osmotic diuresis. Urine osmolality greater than 300 milliosmoles per liter in the polyuric patient is suggestive of solute or osmotic diuresis, where urine solutes are higher. After excluding the presence of osmotic diuresis, the causes of water diuresis must be explored. In patients with central diabetes insipidus, the onset of symptoms is characteristically abrupt in nature. Whereas, patients with nephrogenic diabetes insipidus typically have a more gradual onset of symptoms. Patients with primary polydipsia are more vague in dating the onset of their symptoms. Nephrogenic and central diabetes insipidus are characterized by severe and frequent nocturia, a feature that is typically absent in patients with primary polydipsia. A serum sodium concentration of less than 140 milli equivalents per liter is suggestive of a primary polydipsia because these patients tend to be in mild positive water balance. A value greater than 140 milli equivalents per liter is more suggestive of either central or nephrogenic diabetes insipidus because these patients tend to be in mild negative water balance. Urine osmolality will increase in response to water deprivation in primary polydipsia but show no response in diabetes insipidus, both central as well as nephrogenic. Central and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus are distinguished by the change in urine osmolality following subcutaneous administration of arginine vasopressin. So to sum up, in the approach to patient with polyuria, a urine osmolality of more than 300 milliosmoles per kg is suggestive of osmotic diuresis, whereas a urine osmolality of less than 100 milliosmoles per kg is suggestive of water diuresis. And such patients should be subjected to water deprivation response an appropriately concentrated urine is suggestive of primary polydipsia, whereas if the urine osmolality remains to be less than 100 milliosmoles per kg, then the patient must be subjected to arginine vasopressin response. And if the patient is found to have inappropriately dilute urine, that is suggestive of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, whereas if the urine is appropriately concentrated, that is suggestive of a central diabetes insipidus.